sometimes when I do my recap videos where my X segment ends and the next one begins it just works out very nicely here anyway it's time for another episode of hi there it's Brett Hornby here welcome to another episode of my Calgary Hitman in 6 we're up to episode number 9 here as we get in our, to the stretch drive here in the 2018-19 WHL regular season here. This segment we'll talk about games 42-3 to 48 here. 43-48, to 48, which means that after we get to the end of this segment here, we're down to the final 20 games of the regular season and the race for the playoffs is on here. And, you know, as if you go back to my previous... Episodes here, I mean, the Calgary Hitmen have definitely uh, won, their, won a few more games here in the second half of the season here to get themselves into the playoff race and hopefully uh, jockey up for some better position here, as as you'll find out here. Actually, the Calgary Hitmen have won 10 out of the last 13 games here, settling into the uh, Corral Series here, which will be coming up here shortly, and... Yours truly, I'll be taking in those three games here. So uh, before we get there, let's uh, take a look at uh, how games 43 to 48 have gone for the Calgary Hitman here. So uh, I'll bring in my notes here, which I always put them all on Google Docs here. So uh, let's take a look here. So game 43, if we go back to Saturday, January the 19th here, the Gagger Hitmen were up the road here, up at Edmonton at Rogers Place to take on the the Edmonton Oil Kings here. And, I mean, this is definitely one of those teams that the, the Hitmen has struggled with this season. And, actually, the last couple of games have gone into overtime here. But, uh, this Battle of Alberta was definitely another close game here. In fact, it was first of a double Battle of Alberta here, because if you were up at Edmonton on that day... You could have watched the uh, Oil Kings and the Hitmen play in the afternoon. And then later that day, you had the Flames and Oilers play. So, uh, excuse me, Hockey Night Canada here. So let's uh, dive right in here. As uh, the Edmonton Oil Kings definitely got the upper hand in the first half of the game. And uh, as close as the Calgary Hitmen was able to make it a 3-2 game in the third period. But... Fortunately, they couldn't tie it here as this was a 3-2 loss for the Calgary Hitman here. Who scored for the Hitman here was Luke Coleman and Carson Fook. And then Jack Mendon continued his uh, starter with 24 saves here. Dale Max uh, had 25 saves to win. And this was definitely a balanced spell of Alberta as uh, both teams shot 27 times in net there. So uh, definitely another tough loss for the Calgary Hitman against the... Uh, the Edmonton Oil Kings here, but that's definitely been the theme here so far. So the next day, game 44, Sunday, January the 20th, Calgary Hitman went back home for a Sunday afternoon game. 4 p.m. puck drop at the Scottish Big Seldom. Took on yet another team that's been the thorn aside for the Hitman this year, the, the Red Deer Rebels here, and the Rebels definitely continued their dominance with the Calgary Hitman here as a uh, only Hunter Campbell for the Hitman scored midway through the second period here. And that time it made it 3-1 uh, for the Red Deer Rebels here. But ultimately uh, it was a 4-1 win for the Red Deer Rebels here. But then this game actually got pretty ugly here. Is that there were definitely uh, some scraps here. And definitely in the third period here it started ugly here. Is that Mark Kastlik, Igor Zamula and Hunter Campbell, the goal scorer, all each had uh, game misconducts in this game. On the Rebel side, Cameron Housinger also had a had a misconduct for the Rebels here. But this definitely was one of those uh, ugly games where a lot of headbutting, checks to the head, roughing that uh, drove various penalties and game misconducts here. Where you know you were definitely uh, had a ten minute penalty and uh, you know definitely wasn't eligible to play here in total of this game. But the highlights that. There was actually 80 penalty minutes in total for both teams here. 58 of them belonged to the Calgary Hitman here. And also the Calgary Hitman was definitely outshot here 
32 to 24 here in this game. So uh, the fact that we lost 4-1 to the Red Deer Rebels here was almost secondary to the fact that all the extracurriculars that happened in this game. But things start getting to look a little better here in this six-game segment here as the Calgary Hitmen, you know, part of being in the playoff race and being in the playoff spot is taking advantage of teams that are below you. And they definitely did that for the last four games on this segment here. So it's starting with game 45, which happened on Friday, January the 25th. The Calgary Hitmen were taking on the Prince George Cougars. This was a 7 p.m. puck drop at the Scotia Mix album here. And it started off early with Tyson Upper for the Cougars scored late in the first period. But then the Calgary Hitmen answered back in the second and third here. Luke Coleman, Jane, followed by James Malm and Mark Haslick and Cale Zimmerman with the Dempton Adder put it away for the Hitmen with a 4-1 win here. What to note in this game is that Mark Haslick notched his 30th goal of the season for the Hitmen in this game. And uh, there were definitely a lot of shots, actually, on both sides here. As, uh, the Calgary Hitmen did outshoot the Prince George Cougars 49-36 to here. Jack Monaughton had 35 saves, while Taylor Gauthier, should give him uh, some no credit there, that he faced 45 Hitmen shots here. So it could have been uh, a much wider score here, based on what I read here. So that was game 45. Game 46 here, which was on Sunday... January the 27th here, then the short homestand here. The Calgary Hitmen, for the second last time, take on the, the Kootenai Ice here. As there was rumors all season that the, the Kootenai Ice base out of Cranbrook, British Columbia, was going to relocate here. And actually, the other day there, the Western Hockey League announced that the, the Kootenai Ice will be relocating to Winnipeg as soon as next season here. So this is the second last time that the... Uh, Calgary Hitmen will be facing that franchise as the Kootenai Ice. Actually, this franchise started off as the Edmonton Ice, believe it or not. So, uh, we definitely had a nice rivalry there with the, the Kootenai Ice. And it's not going to be too bad for the community of Cranbrook. I mean, they had 35,000 fans there. But, you know, the fan support and tough economy. And, you know, that's one of the various reasons that this relocation is happening here. So, anyway, let's get back to the actual game here, as I mentioned the second last time that we'll see the Kootenai Ice as they're off to Winnipeg here and we definitely took advantage of a uh, divisional opponent here as by scoring two goals in the first and the second period each here Hayden Elder, Velaz uh, Yeramenko scored in the first and then Ty Carrier, Hunter Campbell scored for the Hitman in the second period here Austin Schillenberg was the only Ice player that scored for the Kootenai Ice for the 4-1 win and uh, the Calgary Hitmen also shot the, the ice 28-21 in this game. So that was that game. And then the next two games, for the last two games for this segment here, the Calgary Hitmen make a quick trip to Saskatchewan here. So game 47, Tuesday, January the 29th, the Calgary Hitmen were taking on the Regina Pats. That was a 6 p.m. puck drop at the Branch Center in Regina, Saskatchewan here. And uh, this, you know, continues the winning ways here as uh, the Calgary Hitmen won this game 5-2 to here. The Pats and Hitmen and Pats actually traded goals. Each, you know, each team scored and it was 2-2 midway before the Hitmen put away in the second half of the game here. Mark Kaslak and Carson Fook each had two goal games. And uh, James Malm scored his fifth, scored the fifth goal of the game. And so how that kid and Elder scored three assists in this game. So everyone's been uh, pitching in here. And you also can highlight that Dakota Krebs, the defenseman for the Calgary Hitmen, fought Duck and Pierce here in the first period there. So, uh, you know, there was definitely a fight in this game. And then Cole Dubinsky, maybe she will label him possible public enemy number one. He took a, a knee in penalty and got a game misconduct there. So, uh, you know, there was definitely a couple uh, incidents that happened in this game here. But ultimately, the Hitman outshot the Pats 38-23, and Jack Manon keep carrying the mail there. Made 21 saves here. So for the sixth game in this segment here, game 48, happened on Wednesday, January the 30th here. The Calgary Hitmen were working their way back west on the Trans-Canada. They made a stop at Swift Current to take on the Swift Current Broncos. This game was a 6 p.m. puck drop at the Innovation Credit Union Iplex. Interesting name for a building, but that's what the name of the building here. 
So this wrapped up your quick Saskatchewan road trip with the 6-2 win here. And definitely took advantage of the uh, Broncos here as the Hitmen were up 4-1 after the first period here. And after the Broncos scored late in the second, Hitman scored two more in the third to make win this game, as I said, 6-2 here. And this was their 10th win in the last 13, as I said, in the opening year. Guys who potted for the Hitman. James Malm led the way with two goals and an assist. And Caden Elder, the guy that we got from uh, South Current, had a goal and assist in this game. And then Riley Stutz had two assists to chip in as well. And to note here is that Braden Peters, who was the backup goalie for the Calgary Hitman, made his first start, WHL start, and obviously picked up the win here with 30 saves. And also another thing you can highlight in this game is that he faced an Ian Briscoe penalty shot that he stopped in the second period there. So uh, definitely kudos to Braden Peters, and hopefully maybe you can take some load off of uh, Jack Madon there, because I think he started like... Uh, over 20 plus straight games there so uh, definitely nice to get some backup support here uh, another seems to be another Calgary theme here with another hockey team here but uh, should I also highlight that uh, for the goaltending Riley Lamb did start for the Broncos there but then was chased after the first period for Isaac Pucci or Pucci Riley Lamb had 14 saves in the first period and then Isaac Pucci had 23 saves as the Hitman did outshot the Broncos this game 43 to 22 here. So, uh, you know, they went 4 and 2 in this six game segment here. So, let's uh, bring up uh, some stats here before we look ahead to here the next six games that's on schedule for the Calgary Hitman here. Actually, let's take a look at the standings here uh, because this definitely uh, is going to be telling the story here. So, uh, when you look at the Central Division here, we're in the Eastern Conference here. The Calgary Hitmen are in the Central Division here, and they are in fifth place here. So what I'll do here is that I'll give the number of games played and the number of points here. So for uh, the Edmonton Oil Kings are first in the Central at 50 games. They have 62 points. And then second place, the Red Deer Rebels in 47 games. They have 59 points. Third place, the Madison Hat Tigers in 48 games has 58 points. Fourth place, Lethbridge Hurricanes in 48 games has 58 points. And then the Calgary Hitmen in 48 games has 54 points. So we're four points behind, or even potentially five points behind the, the Rebels here to get second place in the uh, Central here. But if you look at the... Uh, the East Division and the Eastern Conference here. The Prince Albert Raiders in 49 games has 84 points. They're the top ranked team in the CHL here. And then the Saskatoon Blades in 49 games has 65 points. And then the Moose Jaw Warriors in 46 games has 62 points to round up the top three in the East Division. And then the Brandon Wheat Kings, who's a team that the Calgary Hibben needs to keep an eye on because they actually are behind them in the first spot outside because the Hibben occupy the final wildcard spot. The 47 games, the Brandon Wheat Kings have 49 points here. So we do have a, a five-point lead on the Brandon Wheat Kings, but they have a game in hand here. And as I said, this format is similar to the, the NHL here where you have the top three teams in each division, each conference, get playoff spots and then the next two best teams get the two wild card spots and right now if you look at the playoff bracket here the Prince Alley Raiders will actually play the Calgary Hitmen in the first round and I think if we can avoid the Prince Alley Raiders that would be a good thing here because uh, they are the top ranked team in the country right now and uh, definitely pose a huge huge challenge for the uh, Gary Hitman and then the Edmonton Oil Kings would take on the Lethbridge Hurricanes because they had the first wild card spot. And then the Rebels would host the uh, Red Deer Rebels would host the Madison Hat Tigers and then the Saskatoon Blades would host the, the Moose Jaw Warriors here. So uh, as I say, that's the standing story here. I mean, I'll just quickly give out the quick goal leader, Mark Kaslick, who's leading the team with 30 goals. Igor Zamula is leading the team in 30 assists. And Mark Kaslick is uh, 
leading the team in 48 points here. And overall, as I said, the Hitmen are fifth in the uh, Central with a 25-19-3 and one record. We have 54 points here. So that's definitely where we sit right now. And uh, so now, let's look ahead to the next six games here. And I'm definitely looking forward to uh, three of them for sure because I'm going to be taking that in personally with unique under unique situation. You can take a look at my previous two videos when I reacted to the initial announcement of the Corral series. And last week I gave my little review preview of my uh, Corel Hitman series and I'll do a recap a separate recap on the experience that I have and maybe share some pictures with you if I'm able to get some pictures especially the old pictures in the uh, the concourse here so let's look ahead here this will be this will contain episode 10 games 49 to 54 here so game 49 here would be Friday February the 1st and look at that we take on the Brandon Wheat Kings. That's a 7 p.m. puck drop at the Stampede Corral. Yes, I said the Stampede Corral. That hence the Corral series. And the uh, Calgary Hitmen will actually be wearing the Calgary Centennials jersey at that game, which was the first junior team to uh, represent Calgary here. And then game 50, the next night, Saturday, February the 2nd, the Calgary Hitmen make the road up to QA2 and take on the Red Deer Rebels. That's a 7 p.m. Puck drop at the end next Centrium. That's definitely going to be a test to see, you know, if we can finally... We did beat the Rebels in the last episode there, but uh, they've definitely been a thorn in the side for the the Hitman here. And then game 51, Wednesday, February the 6th, the Calgary Hitman go back home in their temporary home at the Stampede Corral. 7 p.m. puck drop. They take on the Regina Pats. And in that game, the Calgary Hitman will be wearing the Calgary Cowboys of the old WHA. That team has folded because they only played two seasons in Calgary. They started off as the Miami Screaming Eagles and didn't play in Miami. And then that franchise played in Philadelphia for a couple of years as the Blazers and then went to Vancouver and played in Vancouver. And then they moved to Calgary for folding. I mean, the WHA was the competition for the the NHL there, but uh, it was on precarious ground. I should mention that the Centennials, the Calgary Centennials, that franchise now is the uh, Tri-City Americans based out of Kennebec, Washington. So that's game 51. And then game 52, Friday, February 8th. Look at that. The Calgary Hitmen take on the Prince Albert Raiders. This will definitely be a big test, you know, potential first round preview to wrap up the Corral series because this game will at the Stampy Corral, 7 p.m. puck drop, as the Calgary Hitmen will be wearing the Calgary Wranglers jersey. It was the second junior team to represent Calgary, and actually that franchise is still alive today as the Lethbridge Hurricanes. So uh, that's the Corral series there. And then game 53, everything gets back to normal here. Sunday, February the 10th, the Calgary Hitmen take on the Moose Jolly Warriors back at the Scotia Bank Saladome with a 4 p.m. puck drop. And then game 54, the Calgary Hitmen on for Wednesday, February 13th. They go on the road and head down south on the number two and take a little left turn at the Crow's Nest Highway. And number three to take on the Lethbridge Hurricanes at the 7 p.m. puck drop at the NMAX Center on Wednesday, February 13th there. So that's definitely my Calgary Hitmen at six, you know. Definitely excited for the Corral series looking ahead here. But, uh, you know, if you enjoy everything I do on my YouTube channel, just make sure you hit like, subscribe here. And, uh, you know, I'll see you in the next video. And obviously, uh, stay tuned for my uh, Calgary Hitman Corral series, you know, experience video when I take these games in. And I'll try to get that video up before the next Calgary Hitman and Six video for episode 10 there. So, I'll thank you. And,. Let's go Hitman, let's keep the drive alive for the playoffs, and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, the, how the Hitman do, and obviously the Calgary Flames are also having a great season, so thank you.